The better farming trains of the early 1900s played a big role in promoting better, modern, scientific, and most importantly, safer farming practices all over Victoria. And is a big reason why the food you eat today is safe and why so much of it can be produced. Inception The idea of a farming train wasn't actually invented by Victorian Railways. In fact, it was first developed in Canada in 1904. The train brought many Canadian farmers to the Dominion Experimental Farm in Indian Head, Saskatchewan, Canada, where they would demonstrate better farming practices. The service ran from 1914 to 1922 and was a major success. Inspired by Canada, the Victorian train was better and was the brainchild of Victorian Railways Chief Commissioner Harold Clapp and the Victorian Director of Agriculture, Dr. Samuel Cameron. The first train ran in 1924 and was jointly operated by the Victorian Departments of Agriculture, Railways, Education and Public Health. Overview the train was a lengthy 15 cars, which would storm through Victoria's most prolific produce-producing regions, for example, dairy in Gippsland and grain in the Wimmera and Mallee, educating mainly small farmers about modern, more scientific methods of farming. This train was described by the Department of Agriculture as an agricultural college on wheels. The aforementioned 15 carriages would be kitted out with displays covering all things farming, such as livestock, dairy, crop production, pasture, farm machinery, cooking, and infant welfare. All the displays were kindly devised by Hubert Mullet, the future Director of Agriculture. The train was painted a bright, vibrant yellow to stand out and attract the attention of the public. At the tail end of the train, there was a domestic and women's section, which I don't really know how that relates to farming but the section would include baby health, needlework, and cookery. This section broke away from the main train a couple times to wander the main lines independently. Consist. The typical consist for the train, taken from the consist in 1925, was a locomotive, K109 for this photo, car one, a special carriage, Victoria, used for staff storage, car two, a louver van with an electrical generator and livestock fodder, cars 3 to 5 M type cattle trucks, each with three compartments for livestock, car 6 a Q type flat truck fitted with compartments for pigs, car 7 a Q type flat truck used for lectures while on the go, car 8 an AB type corridor carriage fitted to the brim with dairy utensils, herb testing, and honey hives, car 9 an AB type carriage the veterinarian exhibit, car 10, an AB type carriage, the potato carriage, my guess is that it was used for showing off the new disease resistant potatoes, car 11, an AB type carriage, a variety carriage displaying wool and weed soil and grass analyzation techniques, car 12, fruit. The remaining cars were most likely fitted out to suit the needs of the region they were headed that day. One of the carriages would have also been the housewife's carriage. Tours. The train made 38 journeys throughout its 11-year lifespan, meandering its way around the state of Victoria, with some journeys breaching the border into southern New South Wales and eastern South Australia. The first tour ran on the 13th of October 1928, nearly a century ago. The consist was set to tour Gippsland, running down the Gippsland main line until the first stop of Bunyip, where the first of a series of lectures and tours would take place. And the feedback from the public was extraordinary, with some people traveling up to 130 kilometers to see the train in all its glory. And all the lecture cars were found to be far too small, with the same exact situation for the rest of the stops. With around 500 to 2,000 people visiting each station, it was a major success. So much so that another tour was planned before returning to Melbourne. The next couple of tours were an even bigger hit, with Tour 2 visiting South Gippsland on the 10th of November, Tour 3 visiting the Southwest on the 1st of December, Tour 4 visited the Goulburn Valley 
and the Northern Central on the 9th of March. Tour 5 visited the Goldfields and the Mallee on the 11th of May, and Tour 6 visited the Northeast on the 17th of August. By the end of the 6th tour, Dr. Cameron wrote, I have no hesitation whatever in saying that the better farming train has made a greater appeal to the practical farmer and the younger generation of agriculturalists than anything that has hitherto been attained in Australia. Demise The tours became increasingly infrequent as time went on, mainly due to the Great Depression, which really didn't allow Victorian railways to spend money on, quote, unnecessary events. Suspension was even considered in 1930. However, the Minister for Agriculture, William Slater, said it had been inestimable value to the farming industry. With the state funding becoming even tighter in 1932, the next tour was given just £600 to operate, $13,000 today. And in 1935, funding was fully withdrawn, and thus, the better farming train was no more. The final tour made it to the Sunraiser and back on the 4th of April, 1935. Legacy Now, I'm no expert in agricultural science, nor housewiving, as I'm neither of those things. However, the train has made a tremendous difference in the agricultural community of Victoria. It shaped Victoria into the food-producing powerhouse that it is today, teaching farmers on a mass scale. The train still lives on as several posters and even a film that can be found. I'll leave a link to the film down below. As always, leave any video ideas in the comments down below, and I might do them in the future. <laughs>